Today we are talking about changing your mindset. Yes, yes. I want to talk to you about changing your mindset and how an unchanged mindset can spiritually unnoticeably be affecting your daily life. That is correct. Your daily choices that you make. Mm -hmm. And I also want to tell you about why changing your mindset is spiritually necessary for you to have a result fixed relationship with God. Yes, that's where we're going tonight. We're, we're going into changing your mindset. Changing your mindset. And I want to know, did you know that changing your mindset is a kingdom principle? Yes, it is. It's a biblical, spiritual, and biblical kingdom principle. Yes, and this is why changing your mindset is challenging because it is a kingdom principle. So if you follow this ministry, you understand that to believe is to know the principle that directs, provokes, and enforce change. That's what we understand what that what believing is to be. To direct, provoke, and enforce change. To understand the principle that needs to be applied to provoke, direct, and enforce change, right? So the applicable principle of changing your mindset is Romans 12, 2, one of the principles. So, but tonight we're using this principle from Romans 12, 2, which is, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? That ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So even thus far, we can understand that the will of God is in the transformation of renewing our mind. So we don't even understand the will of God until we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. I didn't say that. Your scripture said that, right? So just so that you understand that. Now, in changing your mindset, you will begin to recognize the inner me. I'm saying the inner me like the inner you. You'll begin to recognize the inner me and the enemy. What has come against you and who it is in. And here is an example. I'll, let me say that again. The inner me, you, when you change your mindset, you will begin to recognize the inner me meaning the inner you, the inner me, and the enemy. So we got two, we have inner me and enemy. What has come up against you and who it is in? And here is an example that I have come across even um, earlier this week. So whenever I'm in the company of a certain individual, now this is a real common uh, circumstance. So that's why I said our daily lives can be unnoticeably impacted by an unchanged mindset. Listen to what happened. Um, I noticed that whenever I'm in a company, well, I didn't notice until this happened, but whenever I'm in a company of a certain individual, I find myself thinking about my finances, worrying about my finances. Wondering if I have enough to do everything I need to do or what I want to do and how am I going to do it when I already have all of these things already, you know, in order, right? Then I noticed that I would begin to get flustered and how I start to feel that even what I had wasn't enough. Like this, it really, I know personally that it is enough to do what I need to do, but in this place or in this state, I felt like enough just wasn't enough, right? So I felt like I needed more and, and, and more. So so I, I, I was wanting more. And, and, and it didn't dawn on me what was happening until in the midst of me entertaining these thoughts, a.k.a. familiar spirits, pay attention, in the midst of me entertaining these thoughts, a.k.a. Familiar spirits, right? 
a plan appeared to me of, of how to make more money, what I need to do to make more money to overcome these thoughts that I was having or to deal with the circumstances that kept coming before me um, about money. So I began to think to myself, I'm like, wait a minute, why would I think to do something like that? Like, that's not even me anymore, right? So I understood that this was an old mindset that I once had, right? So I, I was able to recognize the inner me and the enemy, right? Now, the inner me was the old mindset of always thinking of how to make more money, right? And the enemy that had come up to tempt me uh -huh, was mammy. Um, and it was working through this individual that I was in company with because they carried the same mindset of that same spirit, right? Pay attention. Luke 11.24 says it in this way. When an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through arid, also known as dry places, seeking rest and does not find it, then it says, I will return the body. I am recording. I will return the body. I will return to the body I originally left. And I will bring seven other spirits more conniving than myself to overtake this person. I'm, I'm going to repeat that. Even the situation that I just shared with you, which is an actual situation, Luke eleven twenty four describes it as when an unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through arid, also known as dry parched places, seeking rest and does not find it. Then the spirit this, this same spirit that, that you have overcome now says to itself, uh huh, I will return to the body I originally left, which is your body, right? And I will bring seven more other spirits, more conniving than myself, to overtake this person's mind and persuade her or him to do a spiritual uh -huh, deed that will allow us to live in this body again. Now, first of all, we, we came up with one spirit coming to tempt you, but the end result was they all came together now to live and house in you again, right? So had I not had been transformed by the renewing of my mind, uh, AKA my new life in Christ, sincerely, wholeheartedly, totally sold out, Mammon, which is also known as a God of money, was coming to claim its residency that it once had in me. Now, the only reason I was able to recognize this, even though for about 10 minutes, I was entertaining these familiar spirits because it was so heavy. So I, I really understand now with the seven times more be, or, or seven more demons or, or, or the posse. You know how we say we bring our posse with us to let them know, you know, where we stand, what we got. So it's like, that's how spirits come. They come with their posse to overtake you, to persuade you to do something, or the deed that you need to do so that they can live in you. One little thing can allow spirits demonically or heavenly um, um, good spirits to take residence, residency back in you again. Amen, amen. You need to know that. This, this being in the company of this individual brought this about. So, oh God. My God, my God, my God. It's something how they know who you are spiritually when you don't even know uh, what the what they have spiritually. 
right? What's in them? Now, mind you, none of the conversation was about money. We were just having a regular conversation and I was overtaken by these spirits and I'm having a conversation the same as though I'm verbally talking to you, but in my mind, all of these thoughts and all of these things were going on. And when it gave me a plan of what to do, I knew it was against the principles of God. It was against righteousness. So I understood that that wasn't me anymore. I didn't live that life anymore, right? So I, I, I said, well, what is happening here? And then the spirit, you know, it rose to identify itself. Now, because of the state that I'm in right now, everything began to be magnified. Like other things were happening to uh, invoke the presence of this, this, this spirit through the person. And now I'm, I'm seeing clearly because now I'm just understanding what happened and I got it back off of me and out of me. So now it's manifested in its full capacity in the person. So I'm like, whoa, this thing was coming to take me out. Just this little old, just the fact of just being in the company. My God. So that says a lot. So I, I don't know what, what you think at this point. But to understand that the company that we keep means a lot, right? So this is why I say that we don't even understand that a lot of things we go through in our daily travels, or our daily lives, most of the time, it's not even us anymore. It is the people that we are around that we pick up and, and things latch on and we carry things and we entertain these thoughts not even recognizing why we're having these thoughts. So had it not given me the plan, I would have kept continually to entertain those thoughts, never really realizing why am I even thinking these thoughts when an hour ago I was fine. That never even dawned on me that every time I got with this person, but once I was able to recognize when it gave me a plan, now I realized that it was every time I got around this person, uh, these, this financial thing came to me. So then it start now clicking to me to say, wait a minute. Now, now I'm looking at everybody I'm around when I'm around them in certain times and what's happening. And that's why I'm saying it to you because unnoticeably things was happening. Thoughts was occurring and, and you'll be like, well, why am I thinking about that? Right? So, this is why changing your mindset is crucial during the time. It's crucial anyway, but it's, it's, it's definitely crucial during the time of your transitioning into transformation, right? Or else you will transition, but you will not be transformed. Mm -hmm. And that is why and how people take a role in church and perfect the functioning of that role of the church, but their mind, they never changed their mindset. They never converted their mind, right? So if the mind of your soul has not been transformed, you are not authentic, okay? You have just been transferred into position that will eventually cause you to spiritually be perverted. And whatever manner that may be, that you could be financially perverted, you could be sexually perverted, you could be emotionally convert, perverted, you could be mentally perverted. But because you haven't changed your mindset and you and converted your mind, per, the, the spirits, just like it came to me, it's, it comes back. And especially if you have not overcome them. Now, I read the scripture that says when a spirit leaves a person. So meaning that I don't, I don't house that spirit anymore. Now I didn't get into when you still house in that spirit, but you're hiding as if you don't, but that thing is still there. I didn't get into that. But so just to let you know that the spirits are real and they know who you are and they know what you're carrying. So although your position may be your position, your, your disposition is exposed spiritually. Okay. So whether you are new or returning, <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the faith series, right? 
in the transformation ministry which you're inspired by the spirit of holy hostess jc prophetess bernice aka the truth hacker we are a sister station of the Apostles of Jesus House of Prophecy with Apostles Calvin and Evelyn Harrington. And you can fellowship with them. They are my apostles. You can fellowship with them on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 8.30 a.m. and Sunday at 9 a.m. on blogtalkradio.com, AJ Ministries, forward slash AJ Ministries. Now, I will also leave this information in the description box below. And... You can help be a help to this ministry by clicking the subscribe button below. Yes, you can. That's it. That is your offering. That's, that's how you can donate to us. You can click that subscribe and like button to help us reach a broader platform. And I thank you in advance for your contribution. It is sincerely appreciated. And we appreciate you here at the Transformation Ministry. And I hope that you are being transformed by the renewing of your mind. I hope you are able to eat from the table uh, of the, and the spread that the Lord has presented. Now, for those of you who are new or don't know, um, I have been given the task of finding the door to the spirit of truth beneath the so-called truth of church doctrine, which usually challenges traditional beliefs and doctrinal faith. But in the end, the truth shall set you free. So let us pray. Our Father, who how are in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Let everything that has breath, every being that has breath, praise ye the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Um, now, tonight, I want to get into Genesis 3, 9 through 11. And this is where I want to hack into tonight. This is where I was led to hack into the tonight for this message of uh, transforming your mindset. So um, let's get right into it. So we are aware that we are talking about changing your mindset, right? Now, here is a spiritual hack into changing your mindset. So before we get into the scripture, I want to release this to you of what uh, was given to me. So it may not make sense until it spiritually resonate with you. But because I was given this in the presence of the teacher, the Holy Spirit, I want you to, to know this, to understand this, or to get revelation and understanding from it. To know is to not know. To understand is to not understand. To see is to not see. To be grown is to be a child. To live is to die. And to die is to live. Right? My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, right? <laughs> Though it costs all you have, get understanding. To understand is to not understand, okay? I share this mindset in spirit and in truth, faith and love, peace and understanding. Amen. Now, I, I pray that you take that and put it on the altar uh, before the Lord so that he can give you what he wants to give you from that spiritual um, endowment. Um, now, so based on what we discussed so far, I, I gather that you understand that you must begin to lose your mindset to change your mindset. All right. In order for you to, to change your mindset, you got to lose your mindset. Uh -huh. Now, on this transformation journey, you must lose you mm -hmm, to find you. 
Mm -hmm. You must lose your identity to find your spiritual identity. After all, isn't that what it's all about? Right? Now listen to this. The reason why you have to lose your identity as you know it to be is because you are naturally clothed with a false identity. I know that right there is, is something right there. I know that is something. Personally, myself, I struggle with that. I struggle with this part of mindset change because I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand why I needed to lose what I already had to get what I already had again. That that right there was hard for me. I struggle bad in this area of transformation of the mindset in this area. So um, I'm sharing this with you because somewhere, whatever your struggle is, this relates to it. Somewhere, somehow you can, uh, you know, paraphrase it to, to fit you, right? So this just, just didn't make sense to me. I couldn't understand why I had to lose what I had to get what I had again. I couldn't understand that. And, and then I would hear the scripture all the time. You can't pour new wine in old wines. I would hear that all the time. So personally, I would think to myself, but you can pour more wine in the wine skin I already had, right? I mean, that's just logical thinking. I mean, I'm really serious. Like this was really happening. These are my personal thoughts. And, and it, it's okay. And that's why I'm being transparent because some of you may have the same thing going on. But I struggle heavy right here with this part of changing my mindset. I couldn't grasp this part because I still had that worldly mindset and I hadn't come into spiritual understanding. So I, I struggled with losing my possessions. And now don't forget that my story ain't your story. But some but some of you do have the story like into mine. I mean, everybody's story is telling according to them and their faith with God, but we have similarities. We have relationship. So some of you will have to lose your possessions like I did and some of you won't. But I, I just wanted to let you know that this happens. And, 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 and it, it, <laughs> it's funny because I, I really struggle so bad with this guys like I couldn't get over it I, 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 I even with going back into that that frame of that mindset I, I'm just sit, I'm I'm I mind boggled by it because I really really was stumbling here and 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 had I not had mentorship I would have felt right here. I, I really would have felt. So it is good to have authentic, true um, women and men of God uh, as leadership in your life because I would have definitely felt right here because this right here, I, I, it took me a while to get over, you know, and, and, and I'm just telling you um, and testifying to help you overcome your fear and doubt that comes with the process of, of losing things or people or, or, or places, even children. Like it's a lot that you have to go through you to really get to you. It's a lot of you, you have to lose to really get to you. Right. So, um, I, but okay, let me move on because I'm, I don't want to carry on unnecessarily, but uh, what I didn't know and understand was because I still had the mindset of the world, as I just was saying, um, I didn't understand that what I had was not mine anyway, unless I continue to do the things I had done to get them. Right. And, and since I had changed kingdoms, my possessions belong to another God. Right. So there was like a conflict of interest. Uh huh. I got it over here, but I'm trying to live off of it over here. Can't work that way. So uh, I, I'm telling you this in short, but it was a process for me to get this spiritual understanding because I fought. I fought it. So I'm telling you 
to embrace it and try to get understanding, but don't approach it to fight against it because you're only going to waste more time, right? Which, which also is the next point that I had. The worldly mindset and motives and mentality of your motives puts us in a position to spend a lot of time wasting time. And, and that's what, that's what a lie is. That's what falsity is. It draws your attention over here when really the truth is right here. And it, it takes your focus off. And, and, and you don't, un, until you change your mindset of understanding certain things, you can't understand certain things, right? So, Wow, I want to, I want to just, let me just move on. In the, in the transformation of renewing your mind, you begin to understand that a spiritual life, not from the natural life, a way of doing things of, in the natural life, everything is selfish. We want to keep what we have. We don't want to let it go. We don't want nobody to touch it. We don't want nobody to take it. We're comfortable with what we think we have. Because we think either that's all we can get or we don't understand the value of us getting more. We don't understand the, 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 the spiritual laws of, of reaping and sowing or releasing to receive. We don't, because we are taught by nature, we are taught and nurtured naturally to live for ourselves, to take care of ourselves, right? So in the, in the renewing your mind and transformation, you understand that spiritual life teaches you how to preserve yourself. A righteous spiritual life teaches you how to change your mindset, right? It teaches you uh, how to change your stinking thinking. Like I was just telling you a while ago and I had to go through something to get here. So it didn't just happen overnight because I, I, at the end of the day, I got to sleep with myself and wake up to myself day and night. So just like I told you that it, it was those thoughts was coming to me about the money. Those thoughts was coming to me about losing my stuff and what I could do to get it back and how I can get it back in ways I know how to get it. And, and I, and I don't understand why I got to lose it because I already had it. This don't make no sense. Like what, what's up God? What you doing? Like what, what's going on? So it was a mess. It was a hot mess, hot mess. Thank God, thank God that I had somebody that understood that I was just a mess in the mess and they was able to minister to me and cover me and help me because I was just a little, little low and a little stupid and didn't know spiritual things. So thank God that they were mature leaders that understood the process of, of coming out and coming in, the transition and the transformation of the mindset, right? So... Let me get to my witness, which is Genesis 3, 9 through 11, right? So it says that, but the Lord God called out to the man, where are you? I heard your voice in the garden, he replied, talking about Adam, mm -hmm, and was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. Who told you that you was naked? Ask the Lord God. Mm -mm -mm. Now I'm going to get to what I can get through without trying to cut everything off, but, but, you know, for the sake of time, but I'm going to get into this. So the first thing I want to say is, I'm sorry. I want us to take notice that the passage did not say when the Lord called Adam. It was a difference. Normally, the passages say when the Lord or when God. The passage says when the Lord God. Uh-huh. The Lord God. So that, that was together. The Lord God called Adam. So we need to understand who the Lord God is before we can properly perceive this revelation of this passage. Who is the Lord God versus the Lord and versus God? This is the Lord God, right? So through the eyes of my spiritual understanding, I see the Lord as the truth, right? And God as the Holy Spirit for the sake of this message. We know God is love. We know God is all. God has become all. I am that I am. But for the sake of this passage, 
we are going to understand that uh, God as the Holy Spirit. Be ye holy for I am holy. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth, right? So this allows me to amplify this verse to be perceived as this. Now listen to this amplified version that we just got out of what was just spoken. When the spirit of truth called Adam, called you, Adam is a representation of man or a representation of you, right? You and I. When the spirit of truth called you, uh, oh, okay, 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 okay. When the spirit of truth called you, Adam, a.k.a. man, he called you. Now, just so you to recognize that when I'm talking about calling for this, for this first uh, part of the verse, I'm not talking about calling you on the phone. I'm talking about calling you into a change mindset, a change mindset to be accepting truth, a change mindset to come into the understanding of truth, or even to come in knowing that there is truth beyond what you already know. So I'm not talking about a verbal calling. I'm talking about a spiritual calling in your mindset, in your mind, right? So when we go to the next portion of the passage, it says, and Adam responded. So we're going to take Adam out and I'm going to just use you. And you responded, I heard the sound in the garden. So to hear is to perceive, right? And the sound of you is the voice of the spirit through words, right? The voice of the spirit through words. That's the sound of you, right? The awakening of enlightenment. You can, you know, say it that way. And in the garden is a state of seed. The state of origination, which the desire to love the truth was planted. Mm -hmm. So... Let's amplify the verses we have so far. When the spirit of truth called you into perception of truth, according to the seed of the spirit to desire and love truth, right? That's what we got so far. The next verse says, you were afraid. Now you being afraid, meaning you didn't recognize God. You didn't recognize the spirit of God, right? And, and you didn't recognize who he was. You, you didn't even know who he was, right? So being that you didn't know who he was, you, you, you didn't recognize him. Then the next verse says, you, you didn't recognize him and you, you were naked because you were naked, right? So to be naked, I'm sorry, is the camera? Okay, so to be naked is to be without truth, right? Then it says the next verse, you hid yourself, which in essence means you don't recognize your spiritual identity, right? Which is your true identity because you are clothed with a natural identity that you have learned to adopt, adapt, and become custom to. To decide, and then you decide to ignore your spiritual senses of truth, which draw you to cling to your natural ways and understanding, which is lies and hate, which is also a rebellious life. So when we amplify the whole verse, we understand that when the spirit of truth called you into perception of truth, according to the seed of the spirit to desire. And according to the seed of the spirit to desire and love truth, you didn't recognize God because you were without truth. So you hid yourself because you didn't recognize what was before you. You, you, you left it because you didn't recognize it was the thing that was going to keep you or it was the thing that you needed to live by. Because you believe that you already have what you need to live. Because that is the nurture and nature, the nurturing of nature that we have become, right? So, because we cling to our natural ways of understanding, which is 
lies and hate, we just don't recognize it. Everything is a lie and it draws us to hate. Anger, uh, um, anger provokes us to, to fight. Like it, it's all kind of things that provokes us into these states of mind, right? And, and this is also known as a rebellious life. And this is why we must change our mindset. So we change our mindset to come into compliance with our spiritual identity and life. And that takes time. You have to do this every minute of the day. And this is also known as nurture nature versus spirituality. That's what is AKA known as in, in simplified form. So Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm going to let this go and maybe we'll have a continuation or, you know, we'll see where God leads us, you know, later on in the week, you know, maybe even tomorrow there may be a video uploaded. So make sure you subscribe so you can get impromptu the videos as well as scheduled videos, you know, and I guess I will see you guys later on this week and don't forget to Take that prayer to the altar of understanding so that the Lord can impart in you as well. Have a blessed week and I'll see you guys um, in a couple days.